In the last video, I said that if you try to um, do one of these epsilon proofs with a number that wasn't the actual limit as x approached infinity, that it was going to break down and fail you somewhere. So I wanted to do one example of that, and uh, just to show you, you know, how it plays out when it doesn't actually work, and how you know when it doesn't work. And I did want to do one more example of uh, a function that was not rational that had a square root of it just to show you um, how these can be uh, a little more different and, and how, how you treat different problems in different ways and sort of learn to look at them and uh, play around with them and just to show that it, it is all possible. So uh, I'm going to set out to uh, show in this case that the limit as x approaches infinity of this, which I think was the same function that I did in the last video, is not one but actually two. So if that and clearly this is not true, but I'm going I'm going to attempt to show that it is true, and then I'll show you how it how it fails. So uh, the first thing I I want to do is in order to attempt to show that it is two, then I would have to find a um, a value of an x value n past which the difference between this and two can be made arbitrarily small. So uh, I would say let epsilon be given and I would have to show or find an, find an n such that uh, the absolute value of x plus one over x minus one, the difference between this function and two can be made arbitrarily small. So it, it, would, it would start out as uh, let epsilon be given. And then we would have to show the find an end that made this true. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the forwards backwards uh, proof idea. Where uh, and normally after doing that we wind up with um, uh, you'll you'll have like one a x in here, and then you can rearrange that and get and um, isolate the x, and out pops the value of n like we did in the last c couple videos. But this isn't going to work. And let me show you why. If you want to show this is arbitrarily small, the first thing I do is I play around with this expression. So I get a common denominator and I add these up. X minus one, so that'll be uh, minus. We'll have x minus one, uh, two x minus one. All right, we, we want to show that can be made arbitrarily small, and then I just keep si simplifying this. So x plus one over x minus one. Uh, so that will be a uh, that's a minus two x uh, minus two here. Right, so that'll be a um, minus, yeah, 2x minus 2, x minus 1, and then combine these, see where this is going. Uh, so x minus 2x is minus x, and the 1 plus the 2 is the 3, x minus 1. We want up less than epsilon, I want to show that's less than epsilon. All right, so then. Uh, I'm going to use properties of absolute value and switch the switch these around, change the sign of the numerator. Uh, minus x plus three is the same as x minus three over x minus one. Right? They mean the same thing. And then right away, this is this is kind of looking like something um, from the outset that can't be made arbitrarily small, right? Because it's got the x on top and x on the bottom. And we know that as x gets larger and larger and larger, uh, this value is actually approaching 1. So that's like a suggestion that maybe it's not, that, that maybe it might not work. And we're going to have to sort of, if you see that fact in advance, you might be able to use it and, and to kind of know what you're looking for, right? You know that it's x over x. So that eventually this thing is not going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's going to be there's going to be a floor on it somewhere because it's going to be pretty much equal to one uh, for large enough value values of x. So just to keep that in mind as we continue through this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, break this apart and uh, I'm going to do a little algebra trick on it. Instead of writing this as minus three, I'm going to write it as minus one, minus two. So x minus one, uh, minus two over uh, x minus one. The purpose of that is I'm going to stop writing this. And the purpose of that is now I can uh, break this into two different fractions. Let me continue this up here. Let's see. All right, that was, uh, I know you can't see it. So that was x minus 1 over x minus 1 uh, minus 2 over x minus 1. Absolute. 
and now this equals 1. So that is 1 minus 2 over x minus 1. And now we're kind of starting to see where this thing is going to come together here or fall apart. Because um, what happens here, if you just take a look at how this thing behaves as x gets larger, it's 1 minus something that's shrinking. See, this is this here is a shrinking quantity as x gets larger. So as x gets larger and larger, your the value is approaching 1 minus something that's shrinking. So this is actually getting bigger as x gets larger and larger and larger. Now, to, to definitively show that, uh, I'll just um, take a random number here. I guess this might be overkill for this kind of a limit. Uh, you could reasonably just argue, well, this gets larger. Uh, um, well, so, yeah, this is getting smaller, and hence one minus that is getting larger. So I this might be overkill for this kind of a thing, but I want to be thorough, uh, thorough and show it anyway. And it's a nice little exercise besides. So I'm going to say that um, since x is approaching infinity, uh, we're allowed to assume that x is at least, uh, just pick a random number, I'll say 10. So we'll say that we'll assume, we'll assume that x is at least 10, greater than 10. And if that's the case, then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to work th this expression and eventually show, um, I I'm going to put a floor on this and show that this is actually a, um, a, an increase in quantity. So, if if I'm assuming that, that x is at, at, at least 10, the, 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 then I can say that x minus 1, the denominator, is at least 9. And since this thing pops up in the uh, denominator, I'm going to flip both sides of this, and that'll lead me to the reciprocal x 1 over x minus 1 must be greater than, I, I'm sorry, less than 1 ninth. And then I can throw in those 2s, right, put the 2s in there and maintain the inequality. And then, uh, because this has a negative sign here, I'll multiply both sides of this by minus one, and I get that uh, minus two over x minus one, flip the inequality again, is greater than uh, two ninths. And then finally, I'll add the one on, and I'll get one minus two over x minus one must be greater than one, um, uh, wait, I, I didn't flip the sign here. That was uh, this, right? Must be greater than 1 minus 2 ninths, and which is equal to uh, 7 ninths, right? 9 ninths minus 2 ninths is 7 ninths. So right away, this is what shows it here, right? Absolute this, which is the expression that's up here, this thing is always great, provided that x is greater than 10. Right, which it is going to be eventually. This expression must be at least seven ninths. So that's the floor on it, right? That means that um, if you pick an epsilon that is gr that is less than seven ninths, then this expression cannot be made less than it, and therefore that's where the proof fails. Uh, so let me just go through that real quick again. All right, uh, you uh, you assume that the limit is two in a vain attempt to try to find out uh, to try to find an n such that it's going to be less than epsilon, and then you work through all the algebra, hoping to provide you with like a roadmap to working back. Uh, and you, you get here, and then here, and then you notice that this is an that this is an uh, this is a decrease in quantity, and it's one minus a decrease in quantity, which actually makes the whole thing an increase in quantity. And th then you say, all right, well, let me just try this out. I'll make x greater than uh, greater than ten at least. Follow through this reasoning to show that this expression actually cannot be made arbitrarily small. And that's where it's going to, and that's pretty much that's the end of that. Once you show that this can't be made uh, less than some number, any positive number, doesn't matter how, how small it is, um, you're all finished. So that's that, that's an example of where uh, one of the proofs does not work. If you're actually trying to prove something that's wrong, that's where it's going to break down. So that's one thing. Uh, and the other one I wanted to show, or the other proof that I wanted to show, was, uh, if I can find it, I wanted to show that the uh, the limit as x approaches infinity, something a little bit different, of two radical um, x squared plus one 
over x. I wanted to show that this limit exists and it is in fact equal to uh, 2. So this is a little bit harder because it's got this, the uh, square root in it, but um, you can you can work out ways to show, uh, to, to kind of get around this. If you just sit there and stare at it long enough, you can definitely find a way to, um, to get your way around this. So um, I'll show you that. We want to show that the, all right, so if the limit is indeed uh, 2, uh, then for any epsilon greater than 0, there must exist an n such that uh, the value of this, so it's, I'll write it down, all right, 2 square roots of x squared plus 1 minus x minus 2. The difference between the value of the, the function and 2 and absolute value can be made less than some uh, um, arbitrarily small quantity epsilon. So I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing. I want to work with this and show that there that I can make an x that's uh, that I can find an n that's large enough to make this whole expression less than any number you can think of. So I start the same way, add these up, and then try to make it a little bit more uh, user friendly. Plus one. Uh, so that'll be x over x. So that'll be uh, minus. 2x over x, absolute. and I'm going to get rid of these twos. I'm just going to pull right through the absolute value bars because that's not really going to make a difference. All the action is on the inside. So x squared plus 1 uh, minus x over x. And then comes the question of what do we do with this? How do we get this into, into something that we can sufficiently manipulate uh, so that uh, we can get show that it is indeed something that can be made arbitrarily small? Well, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to say, kind of like in that last problem, we assume that x was at least 10. I'm going to say if we assume that x is um, at least equal to uh, 1, in this case, uh, well, here what the purpose of this is to again, I can't stress this enough. If you want to show something is small, and I want to show that this quantity can be made small, if I'm going to show that that's small, I have to find something to compare it to, find something that's just larger than it, but is also getting small, and as a side benefit, is more like lends itself to be more easily manipulated algebraically. So that's what I'm going for. If you want to show something is small, find something that's larger than it. And that's what I want to do. I want to find something that's larger th than this th that I can play around with. So if I assume that x is greater th than 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the, the numerator here. And I'm going, to, I'm going to compare this to something with a more friendly but larger numerator. So if x is greater th than 1, then I can say that this expression, if we hold on to that, I'm going to redraw it up here, is less than 2 times absolute, oops, come down here, 2 times absolute, uh, the square root of x squared plus x minus x over x, like that. Because x is greater than 1, where there used to be a 1 here, right? This is this is definitely going to be larger. So I just want to keep in mind that there that I have a uh, less than sign here. Forget about this for a second, right? This so this quantity is less than this quantity, and this is where uh, I'm going to start to uh, play around with it here. So if I have this, and I have two absolute. If I factor this expression on the inside, I get x x plus one minus x all over x absolute now again I have let me just emphasize that I want to all right I have less than here so that's a less than that's a less than sign it's not an error uh, so this is less than this and I'll continue that over here this is less than 2 absolute I see now that I can get rid of the square root here by replacing this x with an x plus one. So I'll be it'll be x plus one times x plus one. So that'll be x plus one uh, quantity squared square root minus x over x. All right. 
And now, since the square and the uh, square root, they're going to cancel each other out. Everything is positive, so that's no problem. So I find that this is actually equal to now. Uh, equal to. Uh, when, I, when these undo each other, I'll just get the x plus 1. So I have 2 absolute x plus 1 minus x over x, um, which equals now the x's cancel. And that'll be 2 absolute uh, 1 over x. Which, as long as x is greater than 0, which it is, is equal to 2 over x. And we want to show that that is less than epsilon. So all I got to do is rearrange this and say, uh, to finish that off, I'll just switch the x and the epsilon. And I'll have 2 over epsilon is uh, less than x. And that is what I will use for my value of n. And there you have it. All I have to do is say, now I just have to say let n equal 2 over epsilon. If I want to show, if I want to show this, right, is less than epsilon, all I have to do is let n be equal to 2 over epsilon. Again, I will walk backwards through it. If n is equal to 2 over epsilon, right, and x is greater than that number, then all this work that we just did follows, right? Uh, provided that x is greater than 2 over epsilon, then that's going to imply that 2 over x is less than epsilon. And 2 over x is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is greater than this, which is greater than this, and so on and so on, right? right, right so this is greater than this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this, and hence the proof is done. So uh, we took something that looked like it was complicated, and the problem looks like it's toughest when you get about here. And you're wondering what to do with the absolute value with, with the uh, square root. But there's always a, if it's true that the limit is what you th what you think it is, there's always going to be a way to work around it somehow. Um, I just had to sit here and think. Yeah, I want you to know that I didn't just do this. I mean, clearly I I didn't just do this right now, right in front of you on the fly. This is something that's that takes a little bit of time. You have to sit here and think about it. It took me a couple of minutes to come up with the fact that, oh, okay, how to how to get rid of this uh, square root. All I got to do is compare that to this. And, it, and it, I would say I probably made it look easy, but it's not something that's, that is just going to naturally come to you the first time that you try to do it. This is a skill that you have to develop just like anything else. But now I know that once I'm confronted with some kind of a square root, I can compare it to something that's nice enough, and usually I'll be able to figure out a way to do it. This is something that's, that's it's tough, but it's very rewarding. Um, I kind of liken these kinds of problems to a mathematician's version of like a crossword puzzle, where you're presented with um, slightly harder problems each time you know first it's something that's just that just has a bunch of x's in it and then it's something that has um uh, maybe you go to rational functions and then from rational functions we, you could graduate to square root functions and then multiple square roots and it's a challenge to figure out how to get around all these things um but it's re it's really tough i wouldn't expect anybody to try to um to uh, be able to to do this just at first sitting down. It's something that you have to actually sit down and uh, hammer out and think about and try things and watch them fail and then try some other things. And eventually you will hit on something that'll, that will get it t t to work. Uh, if I were to recommend trying anything like this, I would go with maybe throwing a radical in there or perhaps two radicals in there. Make the uh, expression under the, the, the radical, maybe something harder, maybe put radicals on the top and bottom and just see how it goes. See if, uh, if, if you know in advance what the, the limit is, then there's always going to be a way to figure it out somehow. Um, next time, I think I'll probably move on to uh, the functions, um, the actual actual epsilon delta ones. And um, I hope you got so something out of this and uh, thanks for watching.